Dit is Papa Alfa en Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 5 juni 2016. Is het bulletin van zondag? As every weekend, today's bulletin will be in English. We do have an SSTV image in PD50 today, but set your apps and programs to auto switching if you like. That is to not miss anything. Vandaag weer een SSTV plaatje in PD50. Zet je app of programma op automatisch schakelen, zo mis je niets. Today we have the DX News and in addition to that we have an interview by the guys of Ham Radio 360 podcast with Jerry Ranger of Connect Systems CSI on his projects and on the long-awaited multi-mode CS7000. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the bulletin on the RSGB's own website. Now for DX News, compiled from 425DX News and other sources. On the air until the 15th of June, Kevin K6TOP will be in the British Virgin Islands. IOTA reference NAO23 with a call sign VP2V stroke K6TOP. Find him on the 10 to 40 metre bands working CW in his spare time. Send QSLs via logbook of the world. John 2M0JMN is in the Cayman Islands. NAO16 operating as ZF2MN. Until the 17th of June, he's operating holiday style on the HF bands. QSL cards M0OXO. Valdi, SP7IDX, is active from Vanua, Vanua Island, EU046, as LA stroke SP7IDX. Until the 10th of June, QSL's home call, Bureau Direct, Logbook of the World, or Club Log. Uh, Gerard, F6CKD, is on the air from French Guiana until the 15th of June. As FY stroke call sign, he's mainly 20 and 17 metres, QSL's F6CKD. Jonathan KK7PW is on the air as 5X10 from Uganda until the 8th of July. Activity 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres with 5 watts, QSL EA5GL. Hans DF5UG is on the air as 9M2QQ from Segamat in West Malaysia until the 15th of June. Activity mostly 20 metres using SSB, QSL home call. Jeff K5WE is on the air as XR0YS from Easter Island, SA001 until the 8th of June. Activity 80 to 6 metres using mostly CW and some RETI. He may be active on 160 metres, depending on local conditions. QSL home call. This is Steve, KB3SII of QRP Works, and you're listening to Ham Radio 360. I'm here at the Connect Systems booth with Jerry Wanger. Did I get that right? It's actually Wanger, but uh, anything as close is fine. All right, I can at least get KK6 LFS correct. And Connect Systems, of course, lit the, uh, the DMR market on fire several years ago by offering incredibly affordable, well-built uh, DMR radios for amateur use and also commercial use, correct? Uh, that's correct. It's, uh, commercial business is actually much larger than amateur business. So, but uh, we really liked the amateur market because it's more fun. Well, I, I know that every year, you guys have been out here for at least, what, the last three, four years? Uh, three years. I remember I was in the, uh, the D-Star presentation when you made another major announcement of the uh, Charlie Sierra 7000, which is uh, the radio that I'll call the Rosetta Stone of digital modes. And I know there's been a lot of rumor on the internet and lots of talk of the untimely demise and this project will never happen, but you literally just showed me an assembled or partially assembled, partially populated prototype. It's sitting right here. Yes. Uh, the reason why it took us so long to get to this point is the original approach we wanted to use wouldn't work right. We uh, went through the trouble of designing a different version of this thing, but uh, we couldn't do what we wanted until the technology caught up to what we were trying to do. The original approach was going to use some Chinese parts, but the problem was we couldn't get enough information to even use it. <laughs> uh, the, the manufacturer who's building our current products is telling us that the uh, parts themselves, the data sheets, are incorrect, and you'd have to work directly with the manufacturer. And unless you speak Chinese, it's kind of uh, difficult. That sounds like uh, a recipe to make it very easy to bring a new radio to the market. So we ended up using a part from CMX, a CML rather. Uh, it's called the CMX seventy three forty one, which is built by uh, American and uh, uh, 
UK company and uh, everything is in English, uh, the people speak English and uh, it's actually possible to do things. Now with this chip, uh, they're building in capabilities of NXDN, DMR, DPMR and analog. Uh, for the other formats, we'll have to uh, work around that chip because they're not going to provide any support for uh, the other formats at this time. And when you're talking about the other formats, are you talking about things like GMSK? Uh, no, G yeah, exactly. GMSK, uh, D-Star, uh, as well as uh, Fusion and uh, APCO P25 will be done around that chip. Basically the same approach that you know people use with a PC and a sound card. So for our listeners who haven't been following along or may not be aware of the 7000, if you would kind of give the sales pitch of why this radio is really important. Well, the problem with uh, the amateur and commercial market is that if you want to do multi-formats, you have to use multiple amounts of radios. Uh, and depending upon uh, your budget, that could easily be a few thousand dollars uh, if you want to use all the different types of radios. So our approach was to come up with a single radio that does all the formats at a very low price. And it uh, looks like we'll achieve it, and we're hoping, not guaranteed, but we're hoping we'll be able to start selling it uh, at the end of this year. So one of the other things, if I remember correctly, and please correct me if I don't, but originally was there talk of some ability that the firmware source code would be available under an NDA, but you would be able to release it to the community so that folks could modify the radio or, or make additions? Yeah, all of the software uh, is going to be released uh, on, our, on the Internet. You don't have to sign any NDA. But we do have copyright protection, so yes, you can modify our radio, but it doesn't mean you can take our source code and build your own radio for, you know, for commercial purposes. We're not going to stop people from playing around with it for amateur use, but uh, no, we don't want any comp direct competition uh, with what we're doing. So do you guys have any other new products at Dayton this year? Uh, yes, we uh, releasing this year, we're going to actually start shipping in September what's called a CS760, which is the successor to the 750. Uh, advantages of that radio, it has a four, uh, well, color display as well as uh, has GPS, uh, Bluetooth, and a vibrator built in. And that's uh, a mono band available in two meters and 440? Uh, yeah, correct. First, we're going to get the uh, 440, and later we'll do the uh, two meter. Do you have any uh, idea about what street price might be? Uh, yes, we already announced the prices. The uh, price for the basic radio without options is two ninety nine. If you get the GPS option, it's three fifty, and if you want GPS and uh, Bluetooth, it's three ninety nine. Now, does somebody have to buy the radio with all the options all at once, or can they be added over time? Uh, they cannot be easily added. Uh, it's almost impossible. In order to add it, you're going to have to basically uh, open the circuitry and solder some parts inside. We're not sure how many at this time. Well, it sounds like you're not opposed to the idea of people installing them themselves, but maybe it's highly discouraged. Yeah, uh, unless you uh, have a radio shop and you have the equipment uh, to build and test things, which is usually around $50,000 worth of equipment, uh, you're not going to do it yourself and get it to work. Now, I know it's often hard for vendors at Dayton to get away from their booths, but is there anything that at, at Dayton that you are interested in seeing yourself as a ham? I'm always interested in seeing what's being done in software-defined radios and what our competitors are doing. Outstanding. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for the time. Today is Saturday morning where things are just starting to get up. I hope you guys have a lot of traffic and a lot more success. If somebody wants to know about your products, where would they go online? Uh, they have two choices. Uh, you can join the CSI, or rather CS7000 Yahoo group, or you can call us and we'll uh, tell you over the phone what the status is. What's the number? It's 818-889-0503. Uh, and what's your website? It's uh, connectsystems.com. All right, Jerry, thank you so much. Have a great Dayton. Uh, thanks for uh, having an interview.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en s ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Als ik binnenkort mijn F haal, dan ga ik op de lage korte golfbanden een lang draadantenne gebruiken. Hoe lang is dat eigenlijk zo'n lang draadantenne? Ja, dat weet ik niet. In elk geval is hij lang. Ik hang hem op als een sloper. Dan zou ik maar goed oppassen dat je andere antennes heel blijven. Bij een sloper weet je dat natuurlijk nooit. Voor ontvangst zit ik een beverage antenne te overwegen. Zou je dat wel doen? Beverage betekent frisdrank. Een frisdrankantenne, dat klinkt niet heel serieus. Ze zijn heel goed hoor, vooral bij de zwakke signalen. Ja, dat zal wel.